Kevin Gordon here from Autosavant.com with your June 14th edition of the afternoon commute. It's Thursday, it's really Friday for us. We'll be at the beach tomorrow, but we do have some content that will go up about the Lexus GS350 in three parts over the weekend. So probably tomorrow, Saturday, and then maybe Monday, we'll put up the final piece of the review of the Lexus. So starting today, talking about the World Health Organization. You know, who are you? Who, 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 who? Okay, no, not that who. Well, the World Health Organization came out with something absolutely shocking today. Diesel fumes aren't good for your health. I don't know how they figured this out, but it's enormously surprising that the black smoke that comes out of the back of buses and construction equipment isn't good for you to breathe. Well, of course, we have could have guessed this. You know, they've done a bit more research into it and labeled it a level one carcinogen, which means that it's above secondhand smoke, but still smoking's worse for you. Smoking number one for the win. And you know, in their study, it isn't the average person who gets blasted by, say, a 18-wheeler pulling away in traffic. No, it's for people who are really living with diesel fumes all the time. So people who work with construction equipment in confined spaces or, uh, you know, people who work in tunnels, people who are toll booth collectors, those types of things. You know, even the World Health Organization came out to say that the fumes that come out of modern diesel cars are much better uh, and it isn't dangerous to drive a diesel car. It's just one of those things that if you live in an area where you're exposed to constant and a lot of diesel fumes it might not be good for you. But also today a report was published that living in New York City, the people who live in New York City actually have a longer life expectancy than the rest of us. Of course, most of that's probably attributed to the fact that they walk more than uh, most people live in other U.S. cities. So the health benefits of that seem to outweigh their general higher levels of exposure to exhaust and diesel fumes. Next up for today, Matt Artigree, who was recently appointed, and congratulations to him, editor-in-chief of Jalopnik. I've always liked Matt and his content and the stuff that he does, and it seems like so far the direction he's taking Jalopnik in seems to be a good one. Well, he had a really nice little piece about why you shouldn't te trust any of the initial reviews of the Tesla Model S sedan. And that is Tesla is only giving 10-minute test drives to journalists from each of the major media outlets when they do the first launch. So this is kind of similar, you know, these electronic car, battery operated car manufacturers really do seem to be putting their feet in their mouths when they start to talk about what they're doing with the press because if we remember, not Tesla, but Fisker said that they were going to give their cars to the people who were buying them to work out all the bugs before they were going to give them to journalists to test. So, you know, I don't know how much of this filters to the mainstream of people and the buyers of a potential Tesla sedan, but that should be interesting to see how fair and balanced those reviews are when they first start to pop out from those short drives. Continuing on the topic of the Camaro ZL1 versus the GT500 and also talking about another media empire in the automotive space Edmunds.com and really inside line their review portion of Edmunds has done quite a bit of work on testing the GT500 versus the Camaro ZL1 they dropped them both to dynos which had interesting results we talked about and they have probably the best comparison to date up on their site and I won't spoil it for you but you know I don't think there's any surprises in the fact that the GT500 has more horsepower is probably faster in a straight line and the Camaro with its magical magnetic ride control suspension 
might handle a little bit better. But hop over there, take a look at the video if you're interested to see their conclusions and results. Next up for today, Auto Express is reporting, and we saw it through Car and Driver, that there's a rumor about the next generation Ford Focus RS, you know, the hairy, big horsepower Focus. The last one was powered by the 2.5 liter inline five from the Volvo, and it wasn't gonna continue into the new version of the car because they couldn't get any kind of fuel economy out of it. We talked a little bit about that months ago on the afternoon commute. Well, Auto Express is reporting, and this is pure rumor, poor rumor, I don't know what a rumor is, poor, <laughs> pure rumor and speculation, but the rumor is that it, if it comes out, if the ST does well and if it gets developed, it's going to be a 2.3 liter uh, version of the EcoBoost inline four that should make 330 horsepower. So hopefully that does happen. I'm sure it'll probably be a bit longer in the life cycle of the car to get some sales as the car's platform ages a bit. And finally for today, this weekend is the 24 Hours of Le Mans, the most prestigious of the endurance races. So far in practice, the Audis, the diesels, and the hybrids have been the fastest. In fact, I think they're one, two, three, and four, respectively, as far as practice times have been, followed by the Toyota hybrids. You also get to see the Nissan Delta Wing, you know, the very narrow front end, rear, big fat rear end, rocket looking car run, which has been putting in pretty respective times in the, if you put it against the LMP2 class. Uh, so to watch that, a lot of the coverage is on Speed TV and the rest of it's on speed.com. You can pretty much watch all 24 hours if you want to. And Speed is gonna run 12 hours straight for the final 12 hours of the race. Uh, so, you know, if you're interested in it, you can look at it both online, on your TV, and of course, with your smartphone, get updates as to what's happening throughout the race. And that's it. Uh, full week of commutes this week. Again, stay tuned for some video coverage of the Lexus and also some long-term test EcoBoost EcoBoost F-150 updates uh, in regards to some aftermarket accessories that we've been testing. I'll try to get those processed and up for you here in the near future. I'm Kevin Gordon from AutoSavant.com. I look forward to talking to you guys next week.